Hello flowers, it's me, Cozy Bee. I hope you're all feeling healthy and hydrated today. It sure is windy. <laughs> In the last episode, we got a lot done on our new location, and today I want to help Julia. Um, we need to get her some sage. Let's see. Julia seems to trust you as far as she could throw you, and that's probably not very far. She is, however, willing to risk your life. <laughs> <laughs> by going to presumably dark and spooky forest just to find a plant called sage. She can probably help you put the farmhouse back on its feet, so you should go to Dark Grove and find some sage for Julia. You can get there by traveling to the west of Sawdust. So we're gonna go there first. I apologize if my voice sounds slightly congested today as I am having some problems. I think I'm getting a cold. But my energy is still good, so I'm gonna record anyway. Hopefully you could just deal with me sounding a little awkward, but that's nothing new for me either. This is to Dark Grove. Let's go. That sounds fine. I'm sure it's fine. That looked expensive. No, well, it probably was. I wonder what happened here. Hello? Hey Gus, you again. I think we got off on the wrong foot. And now I used up both. I never meant to uh, say nice things about you. Yeah, well, you can't just do that to people. You could ruin someone's day. Well, you said pleasant things about me too. I think. That's different. It wasn't about me. What are you doing here, anyway? Are you following me around? No one comes to Dark Grove. I thought I'd start my day off right with a little self-terror. Beats washing your face with water. Finally, you make some sense. What are you up to? In case I've accidentally given you the impression that I'm a space scientist or something, I like to scavenge. It's what I do. I get into every nook and cranny and fish out the little artifacts the universe forgot about. Now, no one stepped foot in Dark Grove in years. And this tower here is old. Like, really old. You can tell by the fact that there isn't a tower anymore. But that didn't stop humans from using it anyway. At least until they up and left, tearing everything down behind them. So like a nerd in a board game shop, I dive right in getting my little trinket fix. No one could tell me not to. I wouldn't dream of it. Is that how you got your jacket? Oh yes, my little green jacket. I found it in the White House up on the mountain. I roll around on the garbage dump once a week to keep it fresh. Ugh. Well, I really like it. It's a nice jacket. Uh, yeah, this old thing? It's actually gotten pretty musty, and I can't get the mud smell out of it. I should probably change it soon. You don't say. Hey, picking's been slim in the old grub department. You wouldn't happen to have anything to gnaw on, would you? I could go make you something. Boy, I'd kill for an egg dippy. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have. 
I, just, I put that together after the conversation was over. Gus, it's not okay to kill people for an egg dippy. But we'll see about that. Look at this place. Feels like the skeleton should jump out at any time. Kind of, yeah. What a strange wooden leg. There's a wooden leg here. Oh, there is. It's like a little uh, peg leg. Let's keep looking for sage. How much room do I have? Okay. We need Prospector's gear to clear this out. I haven't even seen that yet. I'm sure we'll come across it. Is this sage? Just herbs. I suppose I'll let you know now that my favorite aesthetic for games or decor or just in general are something like... I don't know how to describe it. I don't think it has a... Oh! We got the sage while I was talking. Um, it can be described something as like, something like Gravity Falls, X-Files. I suppose some people could call it cryptid core or maybe forest core, but it's like a combination of the two. That's what I'm here for. Anyway, let's leave before whatever is, you know, laughing in the background catches up with us. And we're definitely not sleeping in there. But we'll sleep here. Looks like a bit later I'll need to go ahead and fill our guest requests out again. No worries. Hi, Julia. Oh, uh, hello again. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting you back. Did you find any sage? Yep, I have it right here. What? You really got some? Oh my, it really is. So musty and crisp. Did you really go all the way there to Dark Grove? Piece of cake. See, bears don't have to worry about underwear. I'm trying to determine what that means. <laughs> and I can't. Listen, if you're serious about getting this place back on its feet, I think I can help. The captain's family ate all sorts of food. They'd grow it in the garden and cook it down into flavors you'd never even dreamt of. Sweet, sour, buttery, earthy, smoky, tangy. I didn't know I could taste words before. And, well, I know for a fact your humans are going to want some. So I can teach you how to do that. If you'd like to stick around. Yes, please, Julia. I would love to. Great. I mean, I'm happy to hear that. You can help yourself from the garden. Things grow pretty fast in there, so help yourself. Thanks, Julia. Now, the captain had a big table the whole family could sit around. We've unlocked a new crafting recipe, little dinner stool recipe. Also a small plywood table recipe, and a tiny buffet recipe. You should probably give folks some room to eat. Dining rooms. There are rooms where you and your guests consume- Oh, she's pushing us. <laughs> Dining rooms are rooms where your guests can consume meals. Craft and place a serving table, a table and a chair to make it functional and give food score. Meals added to the serving table will give out their food score to guests. Guests will consume these meals, usually three times a day. Each dining room will affect an entire building, so resorts with multiple buildings will require multiple dining rooms. 
Raw ingredients will not award food score, only cooked meals will. Lower level serving tables have fewer slots available to fit meals, while higher level serving tables will have more meal slots. I see some wild corn down here. Let's take some. Let's have the dining room maybe right over here. I think that's quite good, at least for starters. Maybe there's a few more decorative items that we could put inside. Yeah, that's quite good. Onions, tomatoes, potatoes, a corn, and herbs. Let's see, where did she get off to? What's over here? Hi, Julia. So, how about that dining room? It's ready. I can't believe you're going through all this trouble. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. I've been by myself for a long time. There's barely a soul that passes through here these days. Except the ones who make a fuss at night, I guess. But I don't have the guts to confront them. I think I'm Julia. That sounds terrifying. Anyway, you've got everything you need to start making some delicious food. Oh, except, like, the one important bit. Somewhere to cook it all. Now, I did my best with what I had in the guest house, but I'm pretty proud of my little kitchen. Ipswich Wholesale has new items available. Visit the shop to find new items available for purchase. That's awesome. We can also... Oh, Palm Voyage has new items as well. And we've unlocked a new crafting recipe for a cast iron stove. 
Uh, also, a puny cutting board recipe. I expect you to make it your own. Kitchens are rooms where you can cook meals. They require either a cutting board, a cooker, a griddle, or microwave. Not all objects are required. Kitchen objects are noisy and can smell funny, which means they carry a negative decoration score. That's terrible, I love kitchens. Guests will not interact with the kitchen. However, kitchens will apply the negative decoration score to an area of effect around them. The debuff will affect any bedrooms built next to kitchens, as well as the overall prestige score of the resort. Place plenty of decoration items to offset the negative effect of the kitchen objects. You can see the debuff area by clicking on the room while in build mode. That's understandable. I wonder if we put it downstairs, but move the bedrooms away from it, if we'll be okay. First things first, what's this? We'll need a jeweler's kit. The onyx fawn. That sounds amazing. Look how beautiful it is. Alright, it sounds like we need to go down to Ipswich to check out his new items. And we're also going to check out the Pom Voyage shop as well. A small refrigerator recipe. Uh, yes, please. Even though we're about to start using kitchens, I am going to put away, uh, the ingredients again. I'm also going to put away some of the wood that we have for fuel because we have 99 and it won't stack anymore. Alright. That's this inventory sorted out. Let's see if I can find that waving bear. Here it is. I walked right by it. It's so cute. Do you like it, Sabine? I was working on the hotel here a little bit and I noticed that bedroom five it doesn't have access to hygiene facilities. It's too far away. So I'm not going to book this room. And for now, I'm just going to leave it empty. But as it is, I'll keep the decorations in there as well because they help the overall score. But in the future, I will come back and I'll make this into something else. I can't do that right now. Um, but I'll just remember that. Hello, Ipswich. So he sells food ingredients, pasta, rice, syrup, sugar, milk. I feel like we'll need all of these things. We have quite a bit of money. So let's buy a little of everything. Especially ingredients we might need for an egg dippy. Which I imagine would be eggs, bread, and butter. Uh... You know, like a runny egg uh, sandwich. But for now, I'll buy one of everything. Oh, he has a quest. I didn't even notice. Hi, Ipswich. You seem like you barely know how to put one foot in front of the other. I'm not surprised. Excuse me? Tell me, child. Do you reckon with the wild? Do you flirt with the bazaar? Back in the Uncharted? I've been known to occasionally look away in the distance. No, I didn't think so. You don't look the part. You've never set foot in a shadow darker than your mother's. <laughs> wow. If you think these lands are young, you're greener than the crudest sapling. There is nothing to fear but those who fear nothing. What the hell are you talking about? Fine, I guess I'm lucky to stumble upon something with pockets. Did you just call me a something? I hope for your sake that they're not empty. Say, you wouldn't happen to know anything about all the humans showing up out of nowhere, would you? I, uh, might have had a hand in that. Well, there's no stopping them now, is there? Once they start coming back, they'll keep coming. I won't complain. Business has been slow since that dreadful blaze. I didn't know the fire reached all the way out here. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about this fire. The fire wasn't even close to the worst of it, lad. The shouting, the anger, the pain, as if the gods were waging war over us. 
maybe they were. Now you're getting it. Anyway, you might be taking care of the motel, but there's a clear lack of stuff to bite on around here. Something that old diner was a sweet spot for. If you can get it back up to speed, I'm pretty sure you'll get more people to come over. Okay, so now we have the quest to work on the diner. Right? Let's read the quest. An unexpected encounter with a very loud wood grouse would have you rebuild the diner on the A24 for the promise of more guests. You're an expert in that nowadays, so why not? Head over to Tony's construction site and find the diner to get started. Right now I want to keep working on the fork and mouth quest. Seems like this breakfast part ain't as easy as you thought. Dining room in hand, you should now focus on building the kitchen to cook stuff in. You only need to craft one cooking object to build a functional kitchen, but you'll need all of them for the most complex recipes. I want to go ahead and do that. We'll come back to the diner a little bit later. There it is. Not too bad. Hi, Julia. I hope you're not bothered by us just coming into your house. Did you manage to get a kitchen up and running? Yes. Well, what are you waiting for? Time to give it its maiden voyage. I haven't exactly won any cooking competitions out there. Oh, no nonsense. You're a natural. I can smell it on you. The smell is definitely all natural. <laughs> Look, here's some basics to get you started. I'm sure not everyone's going to be picky from the get-go. Grab some taters from the garden and some mint next to the lake. And give your new kitchen a spin. I don't know that potatoes and mint go together. Welcome to cooking. Your goal is to follow recipes by matching ingredient items with cooking method cards. Interact with any place cooking object and bring up the cooking screen. Any object in a kitchen will bring up the same interface. You have to learn at least one recipe before you're able to access cooking. Each cooking object you place in the kitchen will give you access to cooking cards and the interface. Higher level cooking objects will yield new cards and a larger number of overall cards. Different recipes require different cooking method cards, which can hold ingredients. Step by step. Go to the recipe book and pick a recipe, then pick the appropriate cards from your deck. Put down a card from the cooking slot. Place the ingredient from your inventory into the cooking slot that has the card. Some cards require fuel to function, so make sure you place a fuel card in the empty slot. Place fuel in the occupied fuel slot from your inventory. Press the cook button and wait for your food to be ready. Remember, the more objects you place, the more cards you gain access to. I feel like this will be easier done than said, so let's give it a try. Let's take out some of our ingredients that we have in the bear stash. Let's see what we can do with what we have. We can make mashed potatoes and mint tea. Let's start with mashed potatoes. We need two potatoes. Do I have two potatoes? I do. Okay. And fuel. Mm. 
We don't need this one. Cook. Mashed potatoes. Basic but comforting. Okay. Uh, let's do the mint tea. We can make many things at once, it seems. I could have made them both at the same time. Let's try the raw one. Uh, maybe some raw tomatoes? <laughs> I guess we don't have any raw ingredient or raw recipes. That would make sense. Or maybe we have to cut some things for the cooking recipes. That's alright. We'll figure it out as we go. Mashed potatoes. Uh, tea. And I guess it's there. Anyway... I think what we should do now, of course, is get some rooms going. I suppose we can also build bathrooms here. That might not be such a bad idea. I don't have enough copper plates for a sink. I'll have to go find some. I used up the last of my valuables buying things for the hotel. It's still not quite where it needs to be, but it'll do. So let me go ahead and put those in and we'll go ahead and continue. Alright, that's it for now. 
The hardest part is done. Now comes the most fun one, or so they would have you believe. Gather potatoes and mint, and then use the kitchen and cooking objects to cook mashed potatoes and mint tea for Julia. Oh, well I dropped them off instead of taking them to her, so let's just go get them. My bad. Did you get some cooking done? I sure did. Well, you certainly did something, but it's better than my first try. We now have Julia's recipes. We can visit her shop to find new items available for purchase. Awesome. Now we can serve it before it gets cold. All right. Um, potatoes, tea. Looks like Finn has something new for us to do. This month only, get a 2% coupon for our sister company, Flight or Freight. For all your package delivery and shipping needs. The only question we ask is, cash or card? The camp is ready. Dear valued partner, here at Palm Voyage, we take steps every day to recognize and appreciate. Our most valuable associates for their commitment and contributions. You currently do not meet the criteria for recognition or appreciation. In fact, our metrics suggest your performance falls under our detestation level. That's that's mean. However, your recent development into outdoor leisure for this property has upgraded you to disregard. <laughs> right? Congratulations. You are now one step closer towards achieving something in your life that has any semblance of value. Ugh. Poor Hank. There are many, many, many steps left. The next one, in fact, is meeting our criteria for a property in this location. Which you should observe in order to be further entrusted with our guest experience. Yes! Tuck's Garbage now has new items available for purchase. I'm so happy. And Pond Voyage has new things for us, too. I'm so excited that we deeply care about Okay. I don't like you, Finn, so whatever. Alright, we have a whole bunch of new recipes. We can make a cozy butterscotch bed recipe. Yes. We can make a lovely lavender bed recipe. I'm so upset I made the rooms. Why didn't someone stop you? Why didn't you all yell at me? What is this? Elegant wardrobe recipe. I just, I want them all, but. A cute, comfy footrest recipe. A modest toilet recipe. We can upgrade the bathrooms in our other hotel. A simple bathtub recipe. A basic bathroom sink recipe. A small buffet recipe. Note to self, don't get ahead of yourself ever again. Sturdy oak table recipe and a rounded chair recipe. All right, let's learn them all. Let's go check out Tuck's Garbage and see what he has, you know, now that I already spent all my money. Wow, there's so much. Towels, ornate cabinets, a little wood shelf, a large forest painting, a cuckoo clock. Best day ever. A critter totem, a happy fish plaque. Wonder if it sings. A terrarium, a toolbox, a small bear carving. Okay. 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 We have a lot we have to do. Let's start by talking to Julia and finishing that quest. Hi, Julia. Did you serve the food? Yep. Well, congrats, Hank. You just cooked your first batch of food for someone else. 
And that's nothing to sneeze at. Now, you better make sure there's always food in there for folks to eat. You can make the same stuff, sure, but you'll run out of ingredients quick, so you better learn how to cook more stuff than mash and tea. I've got plenty of recipes from the captain's cookbook. Come by my little booth sometimes. I could always use the coin. Where is your booth, Julia? I will buy everything now. Is it you? Do you just have it? A watch pot never boils. So how about you take your watching somewhere else? Oh, okay. I bet this is it. Strawberry bowl, corn on the cob, boiled eggs, mushroom soup, chamomile tea, tomato soup, apple bowl, egg dippy, roasted potatoes, and corn flakes. Let's get the egg dippy. Um, I'm also going to get the corn on the cob because we can make that really easily. And maybe mushroom soup too. Alright, I put away all of my food ingredients, so I'm going to quickly run and get what I need. Okay, boil eggs. Okay, and then we need bread to roast, but we only have one fuel card. Will it be okay? All right. And that's it. Crunchy but creamy where it counts. We're gonna take that to Gus, but before that, I wanna go ahead and try and see if we can make the mushroom soup. Do I have the onions on me? I don't. We need onions and mushrooms. Let me just go get those. Okay, so they do have bathroom requests. I wonder if we can make the new and improved bathroom furniture. We can. We need a lot more copper plates. But I can get a basic one up and going. We did get a prestige level up here, but I'm not sure I'm comfortable booking anyone unless they have a really low hygiene score. Only two of the rooms even accept it. Mmm, tough. And our food isn't good enough either. I'm not ready to book anyone here yet, but don't worry, we will very soon. Before we end the episode, I'm going to run the egg dippy over to Gus, and after I end the episode, I'm going to go to the A24 and also to Timber Crossing and just renew all the guest stays, make sure there's no trash around, and I might collect some more as well so we can buy some of the new things from uh, Took Shop. Let's see. Quick snooze. Maybe if we go to Darkwood during the daytime, it won't be so terrifying. Oh, I think I'll also go to the dump and collect a lot of metal scraps so we can get more copper plates and upgrade our bathrooms. Not just in the new place, but also in the A24. And I think one of the bedrooms I made in the new place will have to be changed into a bathroom to accommodate everything and everyone. I guess, guess what I have? You got something for me back there? Yep. Fresh out of the kitchen. Ah, uh, salty, savory, creamy, delicious. Tastes like I'm about to do something useful. You make a mean egg dippy boy. Thanks, I didn't lay it, only cooked it. We used to get egg dippy maybe once a year if that. My poor ma, I don't blame her. She did the best she could. We were told brothers, and she had to carry us all on her back. Literally. 
And we were all little dumbasses too, driving her up the wall. Oh man, I don't think my mom could have handled more than one Hank. I remember one time my two older brothers and I got up in the middle of the night to steal the pudding. And we accidentally dropped the whole bowl from the third floor. I swear her mouth was spouting fire. I thought I was for sure dying that night. I wasn't allowed out of the hole for three days straight. Uh, yeah, that wasn't even the longest I got put in the hole. Did she ever put you someplace nice when you did something good? Like a, a shelf up high somewhere? What? No, that's dumb. Besides, I don't remember doing something good, like, ever. It was like we were twelve devils put on the earth to torment her, and boy, were we good at it. I don't know, I remember doing a lot of dumb things, but I don't think we ever had a hole. Yeah, well, how did you get punished? Forced to eat dish soap? The old stick over the paw? I hated that one. She usually sat down with me and told me what I did wrong. Usually felt bad enough to apologize and never did it again. Oh. I see. That's dumb. Hey, you know what? When you're done scavenging, I think I could use some help with the humans. Oh? Yeah, see, I'm not a big people bear, and I was thinking I needed someone with some heart. Some zing. Hmm. And, don't get me wrong, you have a lot of sticky energy. Damn right. But maybe that's exactly what I need from someone running my concierge stand. Do you... do you mean that? Of course, I could use someone scaring some mustaches off a few folks for a fair price. Well, that's one of the least dumb things you said today, Hank. Listen, if I come and help you, I'll need my own little table with my own little chair. Always the undeniable people possum, Gus had offered his services as a concierge. All he asked for was a little stand through which he could take care of business, of course. A perfect position for such a, uh, charming individual. Listen, if I come and help you, I'll need my own little table with my own little chair. Deal. Okay, that's great. So great. I'm excited. This is awesome. You're awesome. Thanks, Hank. You've unlocked a new crafting recipe. Gus's concierge stand recipe. Great. Oh. Gus has offered to come work for you. His specialty is, uh, meeting and greeting people. You've learned the blueprint for Gus's stand. Now craft it at any workbench. Place Gus's stand anywhere in a resort to unlock his services in that area. You can turn on Gus's services through the cabinet management screen. Guests will automatically accept new guests to any bedrooms you indicate, saving you the need to do it manually. That's amazing! However, Gus won't be as good as you at matching bedrooms to guest needs, so choose which rooms you ask him to manage carefully. That makes sense, okay. Every bedroom Gus manages will cost a fixed number of coins per day. Okay, so he takes a cut. If you run out of coins, this service will stop automatically, and you will need to turn it back on yourself. Likewise, if you edit the staff items or the rooms it affects, the service will stop and it will need to be turned on again. Okay. I think we'll go put that down in Timber Grossing. I was going down there anyway, so let's just zoom on down. I'm sure y'all don't mind if the episode is just a teeny bit longer. Also, I can't help but notice in the daytime, there's no maniacal laughter. Let's see. The dinky shed. It'll cost 150 a day. Let's turn it on. And our hotel here is pretty good. We don't have to worry about hygiene or cooking or anything here right now. So I'm going to allow him to manage all of our rooms. Oh. 
Oh. Okay, I see. Okay. It's on. Let's see how he does. I'm gonna allow him to do his first booking since we're empty right now. And we'll see how he does. Just gonna tidy up a little bit. All right, folks. We have done so much in the past couple episodes. I'm sure they're gonna be a little bit longer than usual, but I had so much fun playing, I didn't wanna stop. And on the same note, I'm gonna go ahead and head down to the dump and collect a bunch of metal scraps, and I'm gonna collect a lot of lumber. And I'm also gonna go ahead and pick up as much trash as I can find. These are all kind of boring things that just take time, uh, but I mean, they're also relaxing to do. So if it's something that you would prefer I didn't edit out or leave out, just let me know in the comments and I'll refrain from doing that in the future and do more things on camera. But for today, I'm gonna do that now. So I hope you all have a great day. We'll see you again soon, bye.